Hello and welcome to the show. President Trump on Tuesday accused Democrats of staging a coup by launching an impeachment inquiry centered on his dealings with Ukraine. Trump tweeted on Tuesday, as I learn more and more each day, I am coming to the conclusion that what is taking place is not an impeachment, it is a coup intended to take away the power of the people, their vote, their freedoms, their second amendment, religion, military, border wall, and their God-given rights as a citizen of the United States of America. The president has escalated his rhetoric on social media in recent days as the Democratic-led House of Representatives deals with more revelations involving the administration's role in the Ukraine scandal. On Monday, he suggested Democratic Representative Adam Schiff was guilty of treason and an agitated Trump was very publicly blurring the two as he treated about against his critics and the House impeachment push. Trump also suggested that any effort to oust him could lead to a civil war, part of a weekend barrage of tweets that offered a window into his raw emotions. Trump was anything but subtle in taking on Schiff, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee and a longtime nemesis. Arrest for treason, Trump tweeted of the California Democrat. It was Trump's latest objection to Schiff's summation of a rough transcript in which the president on July 25th pressured Ukraine's leader to investigate Joe Biden's son. A day earlier, Trump had groused. I want Schiff questioned at the highest level for fraud and treason. Trump on Tuesday stepped up his demand to know the identity of the whistleblower who altered his call from with the Ukrainian president asking why he wasn't entitled to learn everything about the person. The president has called for the person to be publicly identified despite legal protections in place to protect against such a thing and concerns the person may be in physical danger because of their actions. Trump again grumbled about the fact the whistleblower was not on his call with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and got in a shot at Pol Speaker Nancy Pelosi and House Intelligence Committee's Chairman Schiff during his complaint. Trump's administration pushed back hard Tuesday against the impeachment probe threatening his presidency, accusing Democrats of trying to bully US diplomats into testifying against the White House. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo pressed to prevent or delay five former or current State Department staffers from testifying in the House investigation probing accusations that Trump abused his office by seeking dirt from Ukraine on a 2020 election rival. In a fiery letter, Pompeo accused three Democratic House committee heads conducting the impeachment inquiry of an attempt to intimidate, bully and treat improperly the distinguished professionals of the Department of State. The nation's top diplomat, a key Trump ally, declared, I will not tolerate such tactics and I will use all means at my disposal to prevent and expose any attempts to intimidate the dedicated professionals who I am proud to lead and serve alongside at the Democratic Department of State. But Democrats accused the top US diplomat of stonewalling the investigation and according to media reports, scheduled interviews with at least two of the diplomats who both had direct involvement in the Ukraine matter. Some Trump supporters cheered Pompeo's muscular response to the Democrats. But it also complicated the Secretary's own situation coming the day after it was disclosed that he had listened in during Trump's July phone call with Zelensky that helped trigger the impeachment inquiry. Any effort to intimidate witnesses or prevent them from talking with Congress, including State Department employees, is illegal and will constitute evidence of obstruction of the impeachment inquiry said three House Chairmen, Adam Schiff of the Intelligence Committee, Elliot Engel of Foreign Affairs and Elijah Cummings of Oversight. They said that it was on Trump's call. Secretary Pompeo is now a fact witness in the House impeachment inquiry and they warned he should immediately cease intimidating department witnesses in order to protect himself and the President. On Wednesday, the State Department's Inspector General is expected to brief congressional staff from several House and Senate appropriations, oversight, foreign affairs and intelligence committees on their requests for information and documents on Ukraine, and according to an aide familiar with the planning, the Inspector General acts independently from Pompeo. The committees are seeking 
voluntary testimony from the current and former officials as the House digs into State Department actions and Trump's other calls with foreign leaders that have been shielded from scrutiny. It was the first major clash of the days old impeachment probe pointing to a dramatically mounting political and legal siege as Trump battles to save his presidency. Trump faces the possibility of becoming only the third president ever impeached by Congress, which could lead to his going on trial in the Senate. Democrats decided last week to seek impeachment after a whistleblower complaint, supported by a White House call transcript showed Trump pressuring Ukraine Zelensky to support him with politically useful dirt on Joe Biden. Biden is the most likely Democrat to challenge Trump's re-election bid next year. The first move of the three powerful House Democrats, Schiff, Engel and Cummings, was to subpoena Pompeo and Trump's private lawyer Rudy Giuliani for documents and to summon the five diplomats to testify. Secretary Pompeo was reportedly on the call when the president pressed Ukraine to smear his political opponent, they said. Pompeo's letter suggested that the committees could be forced to subpoena the five diplomats and that the state department and White House could seek to limit what they can talk about. I will use all means at my disposal to prevent and expose any attempts to intimidate the dedicated professionals who I am proud to lead, Pompeo said. But news reports said the State Department's former special envoy to Ukraine, Kurt Volker, Volker would testify Thursday and that the ex-ambassador to Kiev, Marie Yovanovitch, would appear behind closed doors on October the 11th. Volker had been sought by Giuliani to help pressure Zelensky while Yovanovitch was removed earlier this year as ambassador after she reportedly resisted that effort. The three committee heads warned Pompeo in a statement Tuesday that any effort to prevent witnesses from speaking to them was illegal and will constitute evidence of obstruction of the impeachment inquiry. Meanwhile, Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, suggested he might not comply with a House subpoena issued on Monday. Giuliani spent months earlier this year contacting Ukraine officials to encourage them to investigate Biden, whose son had business ties to Ukraine. While Pompeo and Giuliani battled the House committees, Trump stepped up his personal attacks on Schiff, the leader of the impeachment investigation, as well as the anonymous whistleblower. Why isn't Congressman Adam Schiff being brought up on charges for fraudulently making up a statement and reading it to Congress, he asked. It is just another Democratic hoax. On Monday, Trump said the White House was trying to get more information on the whistleblower, whose identity is protected by law. But politicians from both parties warned the president against threatening or attempting to unmask the whistleblower, who was reported to be a CIA analyst. This person appears to have followed the whistleblower protection laws and ought to be heard out and protected, said Republican Senator Chuck Grassley. Folks just ought to be responsible with their words. Trump has argued the whistleblower's complaint was full of false information about his conversation with Zelensky despite the transcript of the July 25th call and statements from the White House showing the details offered by the whistleblower were correct. Little was known about the whistleblower's identity other than it was a CIA officer who has been detailed to the White House and the agent identified it as a man has returned to working at the CIA. The New York Times reported. The Whistleblower Protection Act of 1989 allows whistleblowers to stay anonymous if they fit into a prescribed category such as fear for their safety. Lawyers for the White House whistleblower have said the person fears just that. Trump told reporters on Monday the White House is trying to find out the identity of the whistleblower. We're trying to find out who the whistleblower is who reports things incorrectly, he said in the Oval Office. The statement I made to the president of Ukraine, good man, nice man, knew, was perfect. It was perfect. But the whistleblower reported a totally different statement, like the statement was not even made. Separately, the Justice Department disclosed that Trump recently asked Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison and other foreign leaders to help Attorney General William Barr with an investigation of the origins of the Russia investigation that has shadowed his administration for more than two years. Justice spokeswoman Kerry Kupek said Trump made the calls at Barr's request. 
Trump was requesting help from U.S. Attorney John Durham's investigation into the origins of Special Counsel Robert Mueller's probe into Russian interference in the 2016 election. The investigation outraged Trump, who cast it as a politically motivated witch hunt. The Russia probe remains Trump's motivating factor, according to Tom Bossert, the president's former Homeland Security Advisor. I honestly believe this president has not gotten his pound of flesh yet from past grievances on the 2016 investigation, Bossert said Sunday on ABC. If he continues to focus on that white whale, it's going to bring him down. Barr's efforts to probe the events at the start of the Russia probe took him to Rome, where he listened to a taped deposition of mysterious Maltese professor Joseph Mifsud. Barr, who President Trump mentioned repeatedly during his infamous July 25th call with the President of Ukraine, where he sought an investigation into the Biddens, traveled to Italy along with US Attorney John Durham of Connecticut, who was heading the investigation of alleged FBI misconduct. While in Rome, he met with Italian prosecutors at a hastily planned meeting where the two officials were particularly interested in what the Italians knew about Mifsud, the Daily Beast reported. Thank you.